Ahoy, Captains. This is Uncle Neil coming to you from SubSim Headquarters. You may remember back in 2015, a game came out called Crash Dive. It's a North Atlantic U-boat game. I liked it quite a bit. I thought it brought back memories of Aces of the Deep. While it wasn't a full simulation, Crash Dive was heavy on action with enough realism to keep me interested. I have fond memories of Crash Dive and I was very happy to hear that they were making a sequel aptly named Crash Dive 2. In Crash Dive 2, you play as an American submarine commander against the fierce Japanese Navy. American submarines were bigger, faster, and carried more torpedoes than German U-boats, and they needed them. With the whole Pacific to range over looking for convoys, American submarines had their work cut out for them. The game features radar, which American submarines used to distinct advantage over the Japanese. They could detect Japanese ships far before Japanese ships knew they were in the area. Another aspect of the game is the anti-aircraft gun. AA guns were used to shoot down the Japanese aircraft, which are a constant threat because Japanese aircraft are continually showing up just about the time you're about to attack a convoy. Crash Dive 2 also has a crew management feature which allows you to post your men where their specialties give them the most advantage. Crash Dive allows you to take on special missions when you get radio messages from headquarters. In this case, we've got a heavy cruiser that's apparently crippled and we're supposed to go and finish it off. So we find the objective point. We can either use up to 32x time compression or we can set waypoints and just fast travel. This will get you into the action pretty quick. This shows that we have detected a ship by radar. I don't see anything in visual range except a couple of islands and some palm trees. So we need to go ahead and start searching the area for our reported contact. As you can see, we have made radar contact with two vessels. One of them seems to be large enough that it could be our damaged cruiser, so we need to set up an end around position to get around that escort that's following behind it. Okay, so our lookouts, which is just game AI, estimates the cruiser's making about 8 knots. If that's his actual top speed, this should be pretty easy. We just need to give him a wide berth, at least 3,000 yards, go around and get in front of him and wait for him. Apparently, we just happened to run into an, uh, another convoy headed the opposite direction. So that kind of changes our plans a little bit. We really can't make an end around on the right because there's the island in the way. So we're going to have to make a decision. Do we want to attack these guys or submerge and wait for them to pass? So one of the ships has been identified as a troop carrier. I don't think uh, we can pass up the opportunity to sink a troop carrier. So the plan is, we'll engage the troop carrier and one or two of the other freighters from a distance. Then as soon as our torpedoes impact, we'll change course on the surface at high speed and head straight for the cruiser. Alright, so this is close enough. It's time to get down to periscope depth. Start setting up the torpedo solution. Holding the crosshairs over a target basically simulates the fire control team generating a solution for the TDC. We're playing on medium difficulty. On hard or sim levels this takes a lot longer so you have to expose your periscope for more time to get a better solution. Now one thing we haven't had a chance to do is submerge and find out if there's a thermal layer and what depth it's at. Thermal layers are very important to American submarines they had equipment that would detect the change in temperature 
and thereby giving themselves an advantage when they would disappear under the thermal layer from the enemy sonar. Our sub is ready for about 300 feet. Okay, so we're pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and fire a spread at the troop carrier. The game automatically spaces the torpedoes apart for you. So let's go ahead and target this other ship, which is closer. So if, by firing after, this means our torpedoes will be arriving about the same time. One more here. Hopefully we'll create enough confusion that the escorts won't immediately come after us. And we can switch to the chart and that allows us to see our estimated torpedo tracks. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks like we've got three torpedoes. They're going to make it right between those two merchants that are close. Now it's time to start our escape. We'll change course towards the wounded cruiser. As soon as we get a hit, we'll surface and put on some serious speed with our diesels. They don't know what's about to hit them, do they? Looks like we missed that freighter in the back, but we got three going straight for that troop ship. I think we're going to be able to hit it. There's one, there's two, mortally damaged. Okay, we'll go ahead and surface now. Switch to diesels and go all ahead flank. There's the escort. They're out of visual range. And the ships that are closest to us will hit two of them. Alright, so there's our goal. There's the uh, Maya cruiser. And there's her escorts. That was pretty far away. And that was pretty far away. It all depends on what the guys in this convoy do. If one of them texts us and comes in after us, we may not be able to get close enough to the cruiser to take a shot. Uh, that, like that merchant ship just made an unfortunate course change. Unfortunate for him. Maybe we can just take one more shot at him. You never know. Could get lucky. I hope that destroyer keeps his distance. So far, it looks like he hasn't detected us. There's a hit. Nice touch with the flares coming down. And there's another escort. Alright, so they didn't find us. They're searching for a submerged submarine. So our decision to run off on the surface has paid off. It was a good gamble. Now we're getting closer to firing range for that cruiser. It's still showing the same heading, still showing the same speed. I don't like the way those escorts are starting to edge closer to us, so we're going to veer off a little and check out the party that's going on behind us. It's a good thing they don't have radar. At least they a whole different radio. Sub chasers firing at us. Who's firing at us? Oh, that guy's firing at us. Yikes. Okay, well, 
now we have to make a decision. We still can't fire our torpedoes, so I think we'll just man the deck gun and give him a taste of his own medicine. It always takes these enemy ships a couple shots before they zero in on you. My deck gun crew is more proficient than his, I hope. If we don't get a hit on them, we're going to be in a pickle. There's a hit. That's what I was counting on. That was slowing down. We'll go ahead and go to Periscope Depth. This is as close as we're going to get. We're just going to have to take a shot. Ah, we got another hit on him. Okay, so we made it without getting hit. He's right at the very edge of torpedo range. I think we're going to go ahead and set up a solution on this guy and just give him a spread of three torpedoes and hope we hit one. He seems like he's still holding station. And he's coming f towards us, but he's trailing some damage. He's still going the same speed, too. Right, there's a spread of three torpedoes. Let's check the surrounding area. We don't want to get surprised again. And then this guy, slowly creeping up on us. Let's point our stern at him and give him a couple of torpedoes. I would call this a low percentage shot, but at the same time, he may have damage to his steering. He may not be able to avoid the torpedo. We'll let him get a little closer so he won't have time to change course. Torpedoes are tracking pretty good. That looks nice. And this guy is still keeping his distance. So I don't know what it's going to take to get rid of him. Let's go ahead and slow down. Let him creep up on us. And we better go ahead and fire a shot while we still can. These guys, with all the action we're doing, they're coming. Oh boy, here comes the cavalry. So yeah, it's going to get hairy now. Go ahead and take a shot. And we're about 15 seconds away from hitting that cruiser if we don't have any dead torpedoes. Oh, there we go. That's one. That's two. There we go. All right, so the Admiral will be happy. We accomplished our goal. I'll slow the Japanese down. And it looks like we got lucky with that shot, too. Okay, so we got guys coming from behind us. We got guys coming from in front of us. We're boxed in. Take one last look at our success, and then I think it's time to look for that layer. And yeah, we've got 400 feet below us. This game's got pretty good ship breaking up noises too. It's good ambiance. Down she goes. And here they come. And down we go. Now on this interface, the layer is indicated by a thick blue line where you see the numbers dropping. So when you reach the layer, the blue line covers those numbers, and when you're beneath the layer, the blue line is above the numbers. We're going to see if we can find that between here and 300 feet. Because that depth, that destroyer is getting ready to set up a depth charge run. And we, he's got a pretty good idea where we are. And if we're on the top side of that layer, oh boy, that's not good. We are at 310 feet, and we're still 
above the lair. So when he starts pinging us with sonar, he's going to be able to find us. I'll tell you what, this is a pretty tough submarine. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can drop another 10 feet. We really don't have a lot of choice. He's dropping depth charges, and it won't be long when he'll be pinging us. And we're still above the layer, but I think the blue line's starting to move up. We'll go ahead and drop another, another 10 feet. We have to risk it. Ah, there we go. We're right on the layer now. And there's the sonar ping, so I don't think we're far enough below the layer to, to help us. I think we should risk another 10 feet. I don't think we have a choice, because here comes another destroyer. And he's going to be networking off that first one, sonar returns. So we are right in the layer. Don't know if that's enough to help us or not. So it's time for some evasive maneuvers. We're just going to have to risk it. Now at the medium level of difficulty, the escorts are pretty good at finding you if you're above the layer, if you're making noise, but they don't spend as much time attacking you. If you play at the hard level or at sim level especially, then they behave very, very appropriately. Slow the boat down and whisper. I just gotta check on the crew. Everybody's happy. There's no flooding. More depth charges, but I don't dare to go any deeper. shallower depth. I sure as hell don't want to have an accident now. Okay. I think we've escaped. Take a quick sweep with the periscope. See where everybody is. There they are. Range is increasing, so they're heading away from us. surface the boat and make our way back to our patrolled area.
Thanks for joining me in this quick preview of Crash Dive 2. The game should be coming out April 1st. The next preview video will highlight harbor infiltration, and after that we'll try to get one out that shows the aircraft, how to engage them and how to detect them and how to avoid them. I'll be spending some time the next few weeks examining and exploring the game, trying out the dynamic campaign, and looking for any possible Easter eggs. Crash Dive 2 is looking like it's going to be every bit as successful as Crash Dive, the original. I hope you enjoy it. Check it out when it comes out. That's all for now. Take care and good hunting.